Welcome back to another episode of Footballing with Ben Roethlisberger. My name is Spence, and as always, I am joined here with two-time Super Bowl champion, ladies and gentlemen, Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> Spence, we're back. Dude, I love all of the variations you have. We're back. That. We are back. Yes, we are. We had it. Um, I just want to apologize in advance to the people because this one's just us. We don't have a guest here tonight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and well, it's hard to follow up, though. We, we did talk about trying to get someone on because we're coming off Tomlin's. Right. And which is huge, which is awesome. It was so much fun. Thanks, Coach Tomlin. And um, to, the, to the people out there, the fans that were like, we want more. We're going to get more. We're going to do a part two at some point. With Tomlin. With Tomlin. Yes. yes. I'll make sure that happens um, because he, he enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. Um, and I think there's so much more to talk about. Like, we, we didn't even dive into any, like, current stuff, really. It was, I mean, a little bit, but it was all just good stories and whatever. So we'll we'll get that back. But thanks, Coach Tom, for coming on. Uh, we've had Alex on um, yeah. recently, Levi. So just us this time to kind of recap that, check up on life and whatnot. But it was um, – that was a good. That was a good episode. That was fun. What was your? Now that it's been out, because I feel like when we're doing this, it just feels like we're having a conversation, and then after it, like it gets posted and it goes live and it belongs to the community that is, surrounds the show, you kind of get to watch it with different eyes. Yeah. What was? Uh, you have any takeaways from from uh, that conversation, Mike? Um, see, I called him Mike though. You saw that, right? Did, yeah, yeah. I did. That. It's, like easy, that. it's easier when he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation with Coach T. Excuse me. Um, no, I thought it was, you know, I I kind of expected what what we got, you know, like yeah. him just being unfiltered, being calm, being relaxed, because that's who he is and who we are together, you know, sure. and I, I, you know, it was fun teasing him a little bit about his dance around, like, you know, answers and stuff and um, and whatnot, but but I, I don't know, I expected kind of what, what we got. I loved, I thought it was fun, and literally what I thought of, like a minute before the show started was the two-minute drill. Like, yeah. I thought that was kind of cool, like unique. I had so many people come up to me after that and be like, dude, that two minute drill was legit. I yeah. haven't got to tell oh, you that cool. yet. Yeah. Okay. And, but they were like saying it like it was my idea. I'm like, no, that was 100% Ben. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. legitimately, <laughs> Ben was walking up here. I was like, hey, I got this new idea I'm going to try out. I'm like, all right, you want me to set you up? Because typically I'm like, hey, you want me to tee you up? And like, you go. And he's like, no, nah, I'll just jump into we'll it. We'll see what happens. And it was awesome. Dude. It worked good. No, it was, it was literally, I was thinking of questions that morning. Like as I was working out, I'm like, this question, yeah. this question. Loved it. And, but no, I thought, I thought it was cool. Like it was, um, you know, surprise me on some answers, which, you know, is what, what coach does. He'll surprise you on some things. But right. um, I, I just enjoyed that, um, you know, sitting here getting to talk with him. And, and, and really he got here about five minutes before we started and left literally five minutes after we stopped. So what the people got to see is what happened. It's not like we sat down here and talked for hours after because – and that's one of the reasons we had to end the show because he was going to dinner with his pops. Right. And so, um, you know, it just felt like I had some more questions, some more thoughts, whatever. But it just, you know, we didn't have, we ran out of time because he had to go. So that's why we're going to bring it back again uh, at some point. Um, you know, because that was fun. I, I just, you know, just, I, I just, yeah, I just go back. Just his his calmness, just the way he, I think he had fun. Yeah. And, 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 you, and you know, guys saw it too. Like uh, Ron Cook wrote a great article in the Post-Gazette, which, by the way, we laugh because it's like we made it. Every time we, every time we, we every time we get on like the Pat McAfee show, Monday Night Football, we did it, man. Posted, we're like, we did it. We, which is, we've made it, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. I'd mentioned this to you before. Like for me, that's cool because I'm not a professional athlete, but you've been in the Post Gazette like a thousand times. <laughs> no, it's still that's fun. like when we were on Monday Night Football. Yeah, like when we were down there during Pouncey's episode. If you haven't seen that, check that out. And then Ben shows up on the TV while we're filming. The podcast, <laughs> and then all of us freak out. And I was sitting there, and I in that moment, I was thinking, "Wait a second, y'all two been on Monday Night Football? Why are y'all freaking out?" <laughs> yeah, it's just well, it's funny because I talked to Evan because yeah. I, like, I was like, "Evan, you were in the paper." He's like, "I know." I said, "You ever been the Post Gazette before?" He goes, "When I was a senior for dodgeball." I'm like, <laughs> "What? what? <laughs> How as random as that?" Is that true? Yeah, that's what he said. When he was a senior, he was in there for dodgeball, of some sort. And I'm like, "Okay," Chef? I just started laughing too much. Yeah. Chef Evan was in the Pittsburgh Post Gazette for a do was did he win? I don't know. I, I I was laughing and I was I'm taking care of the kids for dinner and I was like, I need to get into this more. And so I don't know. But <laughs> dig up that article. I know it was pretty funny. So, um, but no, it was uh, that was fun. And and we're gonna keep trying to get more guests on. We're we're checking out the comments. We we hear y'all out there. Um, 
I'm going to reach out to uh, Coach Cow. We're going to try and get him on. Um, we do, you know, Kenny's going to come on. I know people keep asking for Kenny. Kenny will come on. Kenny's not uh, in town much. He's been down in Florida a lot. So when he gets back in town, we'll we'll get him on the show. Uh, I have reached out to Jerome. I think I talked about we'll get Bussy on here at some point when he gets to Pittsburgh. Um, so we hear you all out there. Um, you know, Ryan Chase here. I've talked to him. We'll 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 shoot, try and get Santonio San Holmes. I mean, we'll get we'll get some guys on here that y'all want to see. Um, I did. Oh, I did talk to Sid Crosby. But by the way, we're watching the the Pens and the uh, Senators right now. Come so on, that's boys. that's what I'm because the Pens are like on the verge right now. They're like um, the wild. I think they're the second wild card team, maybe. So they got to really step it up, and they're down one nothing right now. So it'd be so dope if they did that. Though. Oh, they got to pick it up. But um, anyway, but I did talk to Sid, and Sid is strongly considering when the season he said when the season's over let's revisit which is i wouldn't ask him to come on right. during the season so um he said when the season's over he will um talk about it so hopefully um all you pens fans and um pittsburgh fans will be able to get him on there and enjoy that as he's going down the ice right now come on it's score there you go oh. um but anyway <laughs> so we will um we do have we hear you guys out there that want some some unique guests and we'll do that and see what we can do um speaking of guests i I read, I didn't watch this clip, I didn't see it, and I haven't heard it, but I read that Pat McAfee, uh, on his show at some point earlier in the month, uh, offered to come down and have a beer with you. No way, really? Yeah, we got to make it happen. I, I don't know how to contact I him. I don't know either. Yeah. Uh, we could probably find out. Yeah, we we'll figured it out, right? Yeah. I, yeah, let's find let's, let's Twitter's that real out. now. I don't have Twitter, but. That's right. Um, no, that would be fun. Yeah. I mean, that would be huge, obviously. That would be. Do you think Pat would be able to <laughs> control his language? Censor. I he, I think. Listen, professional athletes are the most disciplined people in the entire planet. Uh -huh. I've, I've. But I, Pat's I, got. A, we've talked about it. He's got an alter ego almost. I don't call it alter ego. That's probably the wrong thing to say. He can. I mean, he's very good. I mean, what he does, he he like he's has his whole. Yeah, he's entertaining. That's one hundred percent entertaining. Yeah. But I don't know if it's an alter ego. I think yeah, that, that dude's just that. Say. I think that's just what he's that good. dude. Yeah, I've yeah. never met the dude. I have no. I have no context for this. But I feel like he's does national televised mm -hmm. networks where he can't. You know, he's free. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, you're the right. Outlet to be free. I would imagine. I would imagine he's disciplined enough to be able to be like, hey, yeah. man. No, it would be fun. I'd love that yeah. pat on here. That'd be unbelievable. Yeah. So we'll do that. Well, let's jump into a beer. Let's kick this thing off, right? Because okay. uh, this episode, um, we are going to dive into some off-season stuff. Okay. All right, because there's a lot happening in the off-season. There's a lot of moves. I'm very curious about a lot of things uh, because I've only seen the off-season as a fan and then as a, from a distance as your friend, as you've mm -hmm. gone through it. Um, and I'm curious about some, some uh, kind of somehow it, of a, how it operates, excuse me, okay. and your perspective on it. Uh, and maybe how that's changed over your career. But first, a beer. Let's do a beer, and I, we're yes. gonna do a really, we're gonna do a beer to open up that has um, some production support. Oh, okay, okay. It, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. All right, okay. this was sent in. It's better uh, be good because I am a little bit tired because it's been a long weekend, which we'll talk about. Yes, I am. Uh, I am exhausted. I don't know that I'm probably as exhausted as you. But we've been, we've been, uh, we've had sickness going through our house. Like every yeah. kid has been sick and Bailey's sick now. She just actually just had her 10th birthday, or no, excuse me, her ninth birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Was Bay. this weekend. Yeah, happy birthday, Bay. Um, and she was sick for it. Oh. Figures. Uh, we still got that fun. We still went, uh, she didn't get, her birthday was on Sunday and she got really sick Saturday night, all Sunday. She's still sick today. But Friday she got to, um, uh, we she did a little, like a friend's birthday party, so nice. at least we got to do that. She was good for that. Yeah, we took we went up horse riding. Um, her and three of her friends went up and did some horse riding and whatever. So at least we got to have like the friend thing. Yeah, um, that's awesome. But and then she had a big swim meet Saturday. She did awesome. She like broke all her own times, which was great. I don't think people realize how good of a swimmer uh, Bay actually is. Yeah, she's a very good swimmer. Yeah, sorry, I was reaching um, across the. We actually there. had a. <laughs> I was sitting. Where was I? I forget where it was. I was me, her, and Benjamin for some reason. And I was like, you know what, Benjamin? Because he always talks trash about beating me in golf, you know? And I'm like, dude, you're not going to beat me in golf for a long time. <laughs> he goes, you're so I'm going to beat you. I said, your sister will beat me in swimming way before you ever beat me in golf. He's like, no way. And I'm like, as a matter of fact, like, if we went to a pool right now 
I think if I went down, I can beat Bailey. If I'd go down and back, she's gonna get me. Yeah. Because just that little bit of extra. Flip. Yeah. Yeah. And the endurance, like she's gonna get me. But um, in that short burst, I think I'll still have enough strength to get her. Sure. But she's good like that. I'm like Benjamin. She's gonna beat me way before you ever do. And he was yeah. all mad about it. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> because you think like, oh, get your kids in sports and it's good. Let them try stuff. And I'm like, swimming's the base thing. No, oh, like she's it's very good. Yeah, I mean, so but anyway, so it's been a but yeah. So everyone in our family's been all the kids have all been sick. So. It's been lack of sleep and and just all kinds of stuff this weekend. So, straight dad duty, man. Straight dad duties. Yeah. So, all right, what do we got going on here? All right, so this beer right here, actually, I'm gonna, I put it on the beer cam so you guys can see. There it is. It's called Oh Mama. Oh Mama. Yes. Wow. I thought it was fitting. This was sent in. I believe it's from Voodoo Brewing Company. I'm gonna yes, grab this is. here. Um, this was sent in by Sean Rogers. It says, I hope you guys enjoy this beer from the Rogers family, Ghost Dealers. And it says, scan the QR code on the can. Okay. So there's a QR code conveniently placed on the back of this can. Mm -hmm. And this is its production support that when scanned here, oh, this new update, it like lets you read the, uh, the, the uh, text. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? When you scan it, it takes you to Renegade. <laughs> no way. Yeah, is it the dopest can of all time? Yes. Yes, Probably it is. Probably so. Yes. That is awesome. That So I, fi I figured it was ah. fitting. I figured. <laughs> I don't know if you've had this before. That's but awesome. It, it is a golden American lager. It's 16%. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. 6%, bro. I'm tripping over oh, here. Oh. It's 16. I, I, was, I was like right to my left, 16. Like, whoa, hold on. Let me figure out how I'm going to drink this. It is not, <laughs> it is not 16%. Sorry, guys. It is 16 fluid ounces. <laughs> it is 6%. Uh, but it is a golden American lager. And from what I understand, it's best consumed while the Steelers are winning. Yeah. What do you good. think? I like yeah? that. Drinkable? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's Very a good. that's a, they they made a tailgater. Very good. That's what they did there. Nothing wrong with that guy. Nope. Nothing wrong there, Voodoo. Just like that song when it comes on. Nothing wrong there. How did how did Renegade start? How, you have no idea. Did it's always here as long as I can. Remember. I, I, it was always just a defensive thing that's been on, and it's it was always cracked me up because when it came on, you know, obviously the the fans go nuts. It's such a huge thing. I always laugh because the defensive guys would always get like mad. When it came on, what? Not always. I should say always. Someone would get mad because they always felt like after it came on, there was extra pressure, and then the deep, uh, like the other team would do something good, and they would like <laughs> screw up every time it came on. But I always, I always thought it was funny that as it progressed throughout my playing career, you would watch teams like Baltimore, like you could see it like deflate certain teams. Okay, <laughs> certain teams then that came in here more often started what that what I what they started doing is they would play it at practice. And they were instructed at practice when it comes on. Wait, other teams would play it at their practice. Yes. yes. <laughs> what? And when it would come on at their practice, their team they were instructed to like get towels and jump around and make it like it was their thing, so that it didn't like Is mess with real? your mind. Very real. Um, <laughs> yeah, Baltimore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Baltimore. And so you would you if you watch when it comes on, they get like crazy hyped, right. like that. They make it like it's their thing, and so Dang. that's like the that's like the thing. That's wild, bro. I did not know that. Yep. But I love this. As a player on offense, it was cool to watch. Yeah. Because uh, you just you felt the energy come throughout through the like I mean yeah. just just from the fans, from the the from the stadium, from the, just everything. So it was just always I, I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. Yeah, um, I th I th it's a special thing. I mean, that was special in, in Heinz. I mean, just dude, it was the first time I experienced that. Um, like you always hear about it. You know what I mean? Especially not being originally from yeah. here, you hear about it, like, oh, that's cool, man. And you you put, or at least I placed it into some context of like a like a sporting event tradition. I'm like, sure, oh, for but sure, it's unlike anything I've ever experienced. And you it's know, never, and it never changes from being that intense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, like, it's it's always up there. And you know, it was um, I think this year was Benjamin's birthday or something. He had some friends, and like the the parents were like, hey, just video um, Renegade. Like, oh. Okay, like the, you know, just right. like that part that's video. Funny. When people come from out of town, they just want to like that's like the part they're waiting for. Yes, because like you say, it's a tradition. It's um, no, yeah. no, that's cool. I, I liked it. So yeah, I would love to know the history behind that. If someone wants to leave that into the comment section, so I can understand how that came to be. Uh, Mike Marchinski, let us know, man. Come right. on. So the la your last year, 
Um, I made it a point after the first home game and I got to watch it because the first time I watched it was like on the field looking around. Yeah. I made it a point. I have so much Renegade footage. Really? Oh, yeah. Every time it came on, I sit in there, man, and I have so much of that. For Fans me. just go nuts. It's insane. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. But no, it's, it's, it's a cool. It's a cool thing. But as we're talking about the Steelers, jumping into some of the offseason stuff, um, probably a good idea to maybe start local, and then we can expand to the rest of the stuff that's happening in the league. Because I do feel mm-hmm. like there's a lot of stuff that's happening this offseason. I feel like the last couple of years, there's been some really crazy offseason stuff. I don't know if that's just because I've been more dialed into it than normal or if the league's getting more and more ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, to me, I had this conversation with someone recently too. Um, it just feels like more and more free agency is like taking over the game. Yeah. And, and I get it. People are trying to get their money. And, and But guys are moving teams. Like it's, I feel like it's, it's going to be harder to make a dynasty mm. because guys are like bouncing around so much to get paid. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, guys aren't sticking around long, long time. I mean, what the Chiefs are doing with Pat, with Patrick and and Kelsey, um, I mean, Hill left. I mean, you start looking at some yeah. of the, you know, keep those two guys together is a big deal. But it's harder for teams, I think, to keep that 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 right. the majority of the team together. The guys are just they're, they're gone. And I remember the last few years, you you go to play a team, you're like, holy cow, that guy's there, and yeah. oh, that guy's there now. You know, you're looking at the defensive scouting report. Like, when did he go there? Like, you, you just you lose track of stuff, and so. It's hard to even keep tra- keep track of it all. It used to be like one or two guys would go. Sure. Now you've got all kinds of things happening. You know what? What do you think, like, caused that in, in the culture of the NFL? Because it felt like for a while you saw these big dynasties over time. Obviously, you guys, the Patriots over there, and then you have like the teams from back in the day that there used to be. It seemed as if there used to be a high value on keeping a, a group of individuals that were working well together together. Yeah, I just think money, free agency yeah. money got bigger and better, and people just kept getting, you know, it's like our team does really well. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, so say our team wins the Super Bowl. Well, now it's like you, to get to the Super Bowl, that person, you know, a bunch of people had to play really well. Right. So it's like, well, I just played well. It's, I'm going to go get paid. Teams have more money to go grab guys, snatch them away. Right. Um, but you know, what, it doesn't have to, you don't have to wait till your contract's up anymore. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. But what, I mean, if it's working, like I think about the Eagles this year. Right, the Eagles clearly had something. Obviously, didn't pan out that the way they wanted it to, mm-hmm. right? But they had a a solid unit all through the regular season. What, like, is that a, is that kind of the more individualized approach that sh- that you had mentioned, you know, a couple months ago, or whatever? Like how the game's changing. It's more, it's more about you know securing the bag, making sure that you know I'm good, and the the desire to kind of hunt down these championships collectively and build something. You know, your dynasty, your legacies, that's just yeah. not as valuable anymore, do you think? Well, to me, it almost feels like teams are building for the just, just to win it once. Right? right. Look, look at the Rams did. They built that team yep. to win it once, and then they won it, and it's like, okay, we got ours. I mean, yeah. of course, they'd probably like to win it again. Teams want right. to win more than one, but it's like, as long as we win one, we're good. That's what it feels like a little bit. Is, is that – I don't know, man. I'm just saying – I'm thinking because – I'm a Warriors fan, Golden State Warriors fan, and when we had that run, it was, I mean, it just right. felt like you always had a shot. But I don't know, maybe outside of, like, the Chiefs. Right, yeah, they're they're doing, obviously, they're doing big things. You know, what are you, like, like, is that just not, is one enough nowadays? Well, it depends. It's hard to win one, so if you get one, it is. But right. not if you're a true competitor. You want to get more than one. Yeah. You want to keep going, you know? When did you see that change in your career? Because you came in with, like, one, you came into a team that had that, yeah. like, integrated into its DNA. And then you, you had years where, like, you guys were a dynasty. And then you had that, that Patriot dynasty. And then, and the, I mean, mm-hmm. you can't walk into to Pittsburgh and let's play for Pittsburgh without l- learning about the dynasty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, the old dynasties were different because that was, like, before free agency. So it was easy for those teams to stay together, sure. you know? Um, I don't know. I just think it's, it's just it, – I don't know what point it started to change. Um, you know, I, I've said before and took some heat for it from current players when I say that um, it feels like not everybody, uh, and probably not even the majority. Yeah. But to me, there's still, a, you know, there's a lot of me involved in, in, in professional sports. Sure. And I think, I think maybe a lot of it has to do with social media. You know, sure. so social media has really kind of come on. It's, it's about branding yourself. Make as much money as you can, which just not not knocking making money. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, when I got in the league, I felt like we had some big 
names um, and big personalities. Not just big names, but big personalities as well. Yeah. But it still was always like it, it felt like guys were always for the team. Like, what are we going to, what do we have to do to win? What do we have to do? And it was, mm-hmm. it just always felt like that. And, I, and I, I, I do think that that, to me, it's felt like it's just shifted a little bit in the last however many years where it feels like, like you know, I want to win. Like I said, not the majority. Just the, the, there's some, there's, it feels like there's a few on every team where it's, and maybe they're a big time player on the team where it's just like, I hope we win, but you know, as long as I get mine or I get paid or I get the, the follow, you know, whatever it may be. Sure. Um, and it just makes it, you know, a unique situation to try and to win with when they're happy to get their stats and, and yeah. do those kind of things. So I'm sure that people won't agree. Everyone won't agree with that, but I think, you know, the people that don't agree, I've, I've had those conversations with, so I yeah. know they do agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and too, like, I think that's the beauty of the sport, right? Is that like, there's, you know, you have that diversity in opinion. You have that diversity of the way you play the game, the reason why you play the game is going to be different than the reason why someone else plays the game, yeah. which is like I totally get. And, and that is what kind of piques my interest. And we fall into this conversation plenty of times on camera and both off about the personal branding of um, the personal brand value of players and how that's going to affect the game. And we talked about it a little bit with uh, with Coach T with the NIL deals and stuff. Yeah. I'm still convinced and I have no evidence outside of like I come from the – branding side of things right and so i have no evidence outside of my gut and watching the trajectory of um the culture that i think that's going to have a way like the personal branding it's already affecting the game at some level but i think it's going to have a way bigger impact on teams than i think maybe a lot of people are anticipating because I feel like you are doing these, you are doing these these deals outside. Because before, yeah. when you're talking about these cats couldn't couldn't go other places, or or if they had these big personalities that nowadays you could monetize on other platforms, their bag still came from the game. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, you could be, I mean, you could you could be as whatever you are, as big as you are, you could fill a room. But at the end of the day, your paycheck still came from this thing and you had to buy in. And so but nowadays you don't have to do that. Like some players, depending on, you know, their status position or whatever, could be making more money from a personal brand. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Than the game. For sure. So that's that always interests me. Again, I have zero evidence outside of paying attention to culture and my own life experience with it. But I always I'm always curious about the insight that you give to that, because like there are very few people, obviously no one more that I know personally, but very few people that have the insight to the game and the business like you do. Mm-hmm. Which I think is unique because that's why I was really surprised with Tomlin's take, but I get where he's coming from on the NIL and the transfer portal. Obviously his son just transferred, so he's going to feel some right. kind of way about it. Right. Um, I was always a fan of, like, I feel like so many people just transfer out when they're not going to, all of a sudden I, I'm not going to get the job, so hmm. or someone beat me out. Well, then go find a way to beat them out. Like it's all yeah. the approach yeah. I took, but um, I, I feel like that those NIL deals, the way you're what you're saying to, to kind of piggyback with that is, you're getting paid, like you're basically you're you're creating a team, like you're 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 paying these guys to come play, right? And you're right from the get go, you're giving these guys a ton of money, not for success on the field as a team, as an individual. It's it's like, or I mean, as a team and winning, you know, it's like, hey, we'll give you this. If you win a national championship or if you win a conference championship, you'll get mm. this. It's right away. It's I'm just getting this because of who I am and what I do. And, and is it guaranteed? Is guaranteed money? I, I'm, I yeah, as long as it's as long as their deal is. And as far pro- as I know, yeah. And do you know? Because I definitely. I think don't. every year they could. The, I think the, the deal can probably get pulled sure. at the end of the year. But it's not incentive based. Uh, no, no, it's all just you're you're getting it. You may have to do like commercial. You may have to do yeah. stuff, but but that's the but that's what I'm saying is you're not. Dang. It's not based off of wins. It's based off of just who you are. So right from the get go in college or even high school now, yeah. these guys are getting paid just for being who they are. Like you're talking about branding themselves. Yeah, and again, I I'm never going to fault somebody for getting Mm-mm. getting like hey, earn your money. Yeah. I think you're I welcome. think that is a beautiful thing. I just again. I, life experience. I just think giving three million dollars to a nineteen-year-old yeah. and 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 caring about outside looking in. This is my perspective, and it's a broad brush. 
but outside looking in, caring about their their contribution to the team, I feel like with these NIL deals, there has to be some level of regulation, or I don't even know if it's a regulation, but some level of care about the character of the individual to mm. establish the character to withstand a success that this individual can have. Because I feel like historically, even how you guys came up through, it's like, you had to keep fighting. You had to be a dog to be able to get that back, to get mm, that check, yeah. your first game check or whatever, no, no. your signing bonus. You don't have to. Like, and I'm, my yeah. concern, and I don't know if this is true because I'm not an apex level competitor. So I would love to learn more from people in that space, such as yourself. But like, if if you are getting that at 19, is that going to take a little bit of the dog away from you? Might. <laughs> yes, well, that's I mean, my fear. Might. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought, I don't know how, I don't know how it would work, but I felt like, I wish they could get these kids, like, if they want a deal, there should be some clause, like, you get, like, 50% of it up front, or, or 10%, whatever it is up front, and then you get the rest after you graduate. Hmm. Like, hold it hmm. till graduation somehow. Yeah. You know, just to yeah, just yeah. incentivize graduation. Yeah, man. Um, you know, for whatever. And then, you you know, I know you could people would say, well, what about the guy, like, me, that, that went and left and played and didn't graduate till 10, 13 years down the road? Well... I went and played, so you made the money, so you didn't right. need it. You right, know, you right. could donate it to the yeah, school or something. Yeah, you could find yeah. some way to do it, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it can't work, but it just something I thought of. Like, man, it'd be great if you could find a way to incentivize graduation or something with it. I love that. Did you um, just solve the NIL deal? Thing? Absolutely not. No, no I love. Yeah, yeah, I I I love that concept, or at least that as a as an option. Because what is the average lifespan of a player in the league? Three point three years. Like, yeah, three and a half, something like that. That's why really long. Yeah. You dedicate your entire life to do something in hopes that you could provide for your family and play a game you love. Yep. And at most you might get three years. And at the end of those three years, you might not even be fully healthy, be able to go make or provide for your family another way. Correct. You gotta go find a real job. Yeah. Amen. It's nuts. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, that's wild. Well, <laughs> there's our first tangent of the evening. There we uh, go. <laughs> so box. That one's for free, but I, I am curious. Uh, have you, have you got to see anything that the Steelers are doing in free agency? And if so, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I was just, that's why I'm looking my, I was checked on the kids, making sure everyone's sleeping. Um, mm -hmm. But I have my little list here just to look at, cause I truly, I mean, I know some of the stuff, you yeah. know, but um, just some of the things that, that happened. Um, Obviously, Pittsburgh loses Cam Sutton, who was there for a while. Went to Detroit, got real, got paid in, in Detroit. Congratulations, Cam! Yes, I got to play with Cam, so I know Cam. Cam's a, you know that, that to me that's a that's a that's a pretty sizable loss for the Steelers. I think Cam was a guy. I mean, I know Cam's a guy that's very smart. He can play multiple positions in the secondary, which maybe what attracted Detroit to him. Mm -hmm. um, he he was a guy I thought um, just just played the game above as people say above the shoulders, right? Heady, smart, can play. Um, and so I think that, that, that'd be a big loss uh, for the Steelers just because, like I said, he can play multiple positions on defense. Um, losing, let's see, who else did they lose? They lost Robert Spillane, yeah. um, which uh, to, to Las Vegas. And, and, you know, Spillane, big special teams guy. Yeah. A guy that you could rely on in the middle, had been in that system for a while, so he knew the defense, was able to get guys lined up. I know he wasn't like a, this kind of mainstay, maybe a linebacker that everyone thought was going to be the starter for the next 10 or 15 years, but a guy that made a lot of plays. Yeah. Um, a lot of plays both in the run game and the pass game. Um, he seemed like a trench guy. Yeah, just, just, he's just, going to give you everything yeah. he has. Yep. Uh, he's a Mac guy, you know. Um, <laughs> um, Devin Bush, you know, so that that's the other thing, too. You, you lose another linebacker. Did we lose Devin Bush? Devin Bush went to Seattle. What? Um, when did yeah. that happen? How did I miss that? Uh, I don't know. I know but, we let go of Miles Jack. Yeah, well, Miles Jack, I believe, is still um, like a – Free age, like he's uh, okay, yeah, yeah, still out Went there, to Seattle, whatever. Huh? yeah. But well, so that, there's a lot of linebackers, yeah, that man. are gone. Uh, and I know they, they did sign the linebacker from Washington, Cole uh, Holcomb, um, brought him in to probably replace Bob Splane in, on the inside. Yeah. Um, obviously, I think the biggest one, I mean, there's they brought in two linebackers, uh, or excuse me, two linemen, um, Isaac. I mean, I'm gonna make a try his last name, I think he's Tongan or Simone or something, but. You want me to try? You want to give it a shot? Say My Malu. People? No, because if I mispronounce it, it's embarrassing because I'm Samoan. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Um, and then, um, what was there's another uh, guard. Oh, Nate, Nate Herbig. So two line, two guards they brought in to compete. I, you know, probably to compete. Um, yeah. In the interior, it's not like they lost two two guys. And we had to get two new guys in. I think it may be just for competition. Sure. So I think that's always good. I think competition breeds the best out of guys. And so I think that'll be good at line. Um, 
the biggest one probably is Patrick Peterson. Oh, yeah. I'll be coming in. Pro bowler, vet. all pro, um, vet guy. You know, some people might talk about his age almost. I mean, his name's going to be 33 when the season starts. Okay. And for a DB, that's getting okay. up there. But he had a bunch of interceptions last year, played really well. I played against him. I know him. Um, you know, he was a guy that – when 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 you were going against him, you had to, you knew where he was. You knew yeah. who he was matching up against, and so I think the Steelers needed that. They needed a guy in the in the secondary, especially losing Cam, mm. um, that can you know I I think he can still match up one on one with guys. Yeah, um, you know you I would say okay he lost a little step or this that, and the other, but he's still a great. He's a great football player. Yeah, what was what is his deal? Um, I think it's a two year deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's a two year. I don't know all the details of sure. it, but. Um, but I think that's I think that's a good for them. I think signing um, Ogunjobi back, yeah. um, who I thought last year was a huge addition um, to that D line. I thought he played. Um, you know, obviously Cam is is who he is and whatever. But I thought um, uh, Larry played as well mm. as I mean for for an addition. I mean, he he played really well and, and maybe it was one of my big surprise guys really? open my eyes on, on the on the D line so I think that's a big deal for them to get him back for a like a three-year deal so that that's big uh, for them so good moves for the Steelers I think and and obviously get ready for the draft I I wonder um because going into this draft I thought corner was going to be and it still I think is a priority I still think you have to get it but before Patrick Peterson I would say I thought that they were going to go corner number one really not saying they won't. I just thought they would. Um, I think they should, and I thought they should go lineman maybe to protect. But maybe they they feel comfortable with these two guards they got. Yeah. Uh, I I I think they probably feel comfortable still with Chooks at right go, right tackle, and with Dan Moore, who I really like at left tackle. Um, I think you got to just figure out what you want to do though. Do you want depth? Do you want to add something at at you know in, in the interior? Which I know, like I said, you got two guards in there, but. Um, do you want to go grab a, a young center and let mm-hmm. him learn um, yeah. kind of the ropes and everything? So it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Will Patrick keep them from getting corner? Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think there's still some questions up in the air for like um, like Terrell Edmonds at safety. Like, is he yeah. gonna what's he gonna do? He's he's still free agent right now. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what what's gonna happen. I'm trying to kind of look through to see who else are, the is up just there. snagged one of his brothers from Buffalo. Yes, uh, big deal. Yeah, big big deal there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens in the draft. Um, obviously now losing Bush and losing um, uh, Spillane, Miles Jack mm-hmm. still being out there. I guess they could probably still bring Miles Jack back maybe because okay. uh, he didn't sign over that I know of. Uh, unless they feel Cole um, Holcomb's going to be the, the replacement, but I think inside linebacker is another position. But you know they go defense. They've gone defense so many times. Sure. You know. Yep. Um, for so it'll be interesting to see what they do in the draft, which. Um, we'll be able to have – we'll talk about it at some point when the draft – right before it gets here and then maybe do something when the draft's over to talk about what they do. Yeah. Are you surprised that they've done nothing on offense or is that something you think they've reserved for the draft? Steelers never do anything on offense. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, the reason why that's so funny to me is because you said it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, at one point I, – I don't. I wish I remembered it. I think it was um, up until my last year. My last year they went like – uh, which was Canada's first year as OC, which I always joked with Canada. I was like, "Hey, what do you have on Mike Tomlin? Like, why did why did he like seven seven of the of our eight picks for offense? Like, how did you get that?" Um, but uh, up until that point, I want to say it was like, and I could be wrong, but it's something like <clears throat> ten of the last twelve years, the first rounders were all defense yeah. or something ridiculous, you know? Well, he's defense guy, <clears throat> right? He's defense. Yeah, he's a defensive yeah. guy. Um, but uh, you know, they but that, that's going to be the interesting thing because they have, I believe, the high or they did last year the highest paid defense in the NFL. Yes. So you've got players there. Um, do you try and go D line again, or you know, or, you know, get a D lineman in there with Cam and those guys? That Cam's getting a little old. I mean, Cam's still playing at a high level, but what do you? I, I don't know. You, yeah. you never know. The Steelers are always they always surprise people when it comes to drafting. Right. In and my I'm, opinion, I always feel like it, it's never a loss getting good uh, offensive linemen. Yeah, All I right. know. It's, uh, that's a pretty viable position, right? And so you have you have the draft, and it's uh, or, or you have the off season. Obviously, free agency is a good place to go snag some veterans, um, and you're getting your rookies from your draft. How does that? If you're putting together a team, right? Uh, how like, what do you deem more valuable? Is free agency or the draft, or does it does it depend on what it is that you need? Yeah, it depends on what you need. In my opinion, I also think it depends on what draft pick you have, right? Sure. If you're in if you're in the lower half of the first round which we worked a lot when i was playing yeah. um you know you 
and is your team old or younger? You know, do you want to try and get a veteran? Usually, free agencies, free agents are veteran or more veteran guys, mm-hmm. and so you you fill holes with those guys. And, and we've in the past done a great job. We brought James Ferrier in. Um, you can get some really good veteran free agents that you can build around. Um, but if you've got a top um, draft pick, um, top ten, maybe even top fifteen, mm-hmm. and you need something filled, and whether it's a skilled guy or something, and there's a guy in the draft that is just a dude you're not reaching i think that's the problem too when drafting if you reach if you're just like ah let's let's reach for this guy yeah then you're then you're that's not the smart move sure where free agency you don't usually reach you're like okay he's a free agent we're gonna take a shot on the guy um i also think the the interesting thing that the steelers i felt have done a lot in the past is they try and get a bargain free agent and that usually means it's a guy that maybe was banged up mm. it's like oh no he's healthy now like let's <laughs> instead of going to get that free agent that is just top of the game. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't want to, have to pay a lot. Sure. Which, okay, that's everyone's got different philosophies. Um, and it's not all free agents are, are that way, but I think that's, uh, to me, if it has felt that way traditionally, that they've done that. You know, sure. let's take a flyer on a guy that's a little cheaper, but maybe has a little baggage for whatever reason. Sure. So I think there's a lot of factors involved in that question, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, and I, I don't know that I was expecting a, a black and white answer there. I am, it, it is. Key, key, like I'm curious it's because it's interesting to me that like it seems as if there's a lot of um, resources being poured into packing the defense with a lot of veterans but we still have extremely young offense in Pittsburgh Mm. do you think that's intentional to allow Kenny to lead a younger team and come up together Uh, or do you think adding veterans to the offense like do you think adding veterans to the offense could be challenging for to be led by like I guess second year quarterback Right. Um, or you, so do you think that's in, like an intentional move to keep veterans off of the well, offense? You think they could be it's benefited? interesting you brought that up. I'd never thought about that, like not wanting to have a veteran in because he's kind of your veteran your because better, the ceiling, your leader. Because right, the ceiling can only – if you're the leader, mm-hmm. you can only lead to your ceiling, yeah. right? But then the other thing I would say is it's kind of what our conversation we just had. Like, okay, yeah, let's let Kenny and this group come up together. But this group's only going to be able to be together for three years or four years before guys start – Right leaving for free agency or whatever it may be. So um, I still think it'd be good. I, I thought this, you know, I thought last year, I, th- I still think they could, like adding a veteran wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, a veteran line. I mean, veteran linemen are always super valuable, which they did. Those are veteran guys they brought mm-hmm. in. But, um, you know, a tight end. I know Zach Gentry, which I love to death, would love to have him back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he's up. Um Tight ends, running backs, wide receiver, especially wide receiver. You get a veteran wide receiver, especially with the good the, the wide receivers they have here. You know, you, yeah. got, you got Deontay another year, um, and, and so you've you've got some really good guys that could benefit probably from having a veteran guy yeah. in there. And Deontay's getting a little bit older now, so he's kind of a veteran. But yeah, yeah, man, it's it's exciting to see to see it all play out across the league for sure. Do you feel good um, about the moves that are being made so far for Pittsburgh? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's smart. Like I said, those linemen, I don't know a lot about them, but I think it's good, to, like you said, having veteran guys in here is always important. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like maybe they're 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 saving something for the draft. I think that'll be the big thing. Let's see um, kind of the thoughts moving forward. I think Patrick Pearson's huge. I think that's a great move yeah. for the Steelers. I think that that's one that will really help them. And um, there's, I mean, not that you need more veteran leadership on defense, but right. you you can always use good players. Yeah, no, for sure, brother. Uh, I have uh, so many more draft questions, but I think we should save that for the actual draft. Okay. Yeah, yeah I am going to dial fine. up this next beer. Okay, nice. All right, so this was sent in from, I think this was this been in your fridge for a while. Oh, really? Because it ends with Merry Christmas, Yins, guys. Oh, boy. Is this a Christmas beer? Or is it just no, a no, beer? no, it's not okay. a Christmas beer. But um, I think this was the right... Listen, you guys have been so great at sending in beers. Yes. We are doing the best we can to get through all of them. So if you have not seen a beer that you sent in, our apologies. Ben's be- beer fridge over here has notes and beers. It just we're trying. <laughs> we only do this once a couple every yeah. week or whatever. But I will say we will say this too that we did have a bonfire the other night um, sure. out at my parents' farm, and um, at my parents' farm at our farm um, <laughs> where my parents live. Um, and we had a huge bonfire and a bunch of buddies came out there and we, we did take a bunch of beers out there. And so we, we tried them and so they don't all make the show, but they all are getting sampled. And so we're very, and a lot of them are ones that we have talked about. We, we drank the second one that people sent or whatever. So 
Um, thank you so much to all the fans, everybody who's sending beers in. We are getting to them. Um, we appreciate you guys doing them. We've enjoyed um, them with our friends. Um, and, and so thank you so much for, for being a part of the show with us. I mean, that's what this is about. You guys are a part of this with us. So thank you uh, for that. 100%. Uh, so this was sent in by a uh, was it Glenn Campbell. And the footnote here is... P.S. Spence, watch out. This is a, a, from a brewery called Hoof Hearted Brewing. All right. Hoof and hearted. it says the Hoof Hearted Pour, watch out for the Hoof Hearted Pours. They can be foamy, and we do not want to have another uh. incident. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, love it. I Glenn, love it. Thanks for airing me out, bro. <laughs> no, but no, thanks for the heads up, dude. That's, uh, I need all the help I can get. All right. <laughs> so awesome. let me, let me tile this one up. If you guys don't know what Glenn here is talking about, uh, I poured beer all over myself a couple times here. Yeah. I'm getting better. Right? What Do we know what this is? Yes, we do. I mean, I'm sure you do. This is, uh, he sent a, like, a variety four pack, so that's awesome, Glenn. He's got a great note that um, I'll let you read when you have time. It's a little bit uh, lengthy, and there's a um, there's a Buckeyes chant in the middle of it. Oh. So. Okay. A little. Look at that can. Yeah, the can's wild. All of the, what in this, the world? I'm going to be honest with you, Hoof Hearted. Uh, it's from Hoof Hearted Brewing Company. And uh, let me see here. Excuse my lack of preparation with the beers, guys. Um, and Mass Landing Brewing Company it seems to be a collab. It's called It It Ain't It. It's a new wave lager. It ain't it. It's 6% uh, and, and tells us to drink at 46 degrees. Oh, so a little yeah. warmer? So I, I guess so. I did not measure the temperature. It's from Columbus, Ohio. Oh, the Buckeyes. Yeah. That's why they want it. A lot of OH. OH. Um, yeah. So that's the can. And I'm going to be honest with you. I wanted to try some of the other types of beers they had, but all of 46. the beer names were like just not appropriate to read. <laughs> just not. They're nope. great. They're hilarious beer names for sure. I just wasn't going to put this or put them on this show. Not but, for uh, our show. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Logger, two loggers tonight so far. Yeah. But it's a new wave, so it's got uh, what? Citron hops for all you hop heads. What do you think here? Oh, that's a that's a, if that's a lager, that is the hoppiest lager I've ever had in my life. I was gonna say, oh, that tastes it's, like a, it, it's like a grape. It's got a, like a. That's the citron. Oh, that's the citron. It tastes like a session uh, IPA. You know, like the Founders All Day IPA? Mm -hmm. Right there. This is a little skunkier, though. Like, the hoppier. What do you think? Yeah, if you were to put this in a glass and said, what do you think this is? I'd say it's an IPA. Yeah. But it's super smooth and drinkable. For sure. It doesn't, like, it doesn't, like, linger like an IPA. But. No, for got? sure. I don't even know what that, that art is on there. Yeah, what is that? It's like a person playing guitar. Is it? Oh, is it New Wave? It's New Wave, bruh. It's New Wave. Yeah, I heard you say it three times. I still don't know what that New, is. Well, listen. Let me hear. New Wave. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean New Wave. Did you hear what I said, though? New Wave? I said it was New Wave. <laughs> yeah, because, hey, it ain't it. Hey, that ain't it. Um, that's a funny That's a funny name. It ain't it. Hmm. No, this is this is good. I, I, that's good. That's, that's, we're two for two. Yeah. Thank Look you, Hoof Hearted. Hoof, yeah, great show. I tune in every week. Here are some beers from Central Ohio for Yins to try Yins podcast. It's very kind of you to say Yins being from Ohio. Uh, oh, I was raised as a Yinzer. Yeah, right. In Twin City. Yep. Stoneboro, Sandy Lake. Go Sailors. Uh, transplant to Ohio. Cool. Okay. Go Buckeyes. Yeah. Um, eager <laughs> eager uh, to try these. And uh, he sent us out, but he apologizes for the stout. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. that's okay, because I put it in my car's motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I'll let you read the rest of that. He's okay. got some kind Thanks, words. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, Glenn, appreciate Merry, you, Merry brother. Christmas to you too, bud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we told you we'd get to him. We got, there's a lot of beers. You guys, are, you guys are great fans, and we appreciate it. You guys are sending a lot of stuff down there. We should figure out a way to send them some beers Yeah. at some point. Partner up with somebody, make one. That'd be awesome. Give a little beer. A little beer club? Up. A little beer club? Big Ben's Beer Club? That, Boom. Let's figure that out. We need, we need a sponsor first. Yeah, that's true. We need some sponsors. Yeah. Shows just, have sponsors, don't they? Yeah. Uh, like other shows? Not Basement Beer Cast. Not Basement <laughs> Beer uh, Podcast. 
<laughs> did, did we create a new genre of show? Is it like that's good. Basement that's beer unique. podcast. Basement beer podcast. That's kind of hard to say. Uh, yeah, I screwed up twice so far. Yeah, that's um, very good, Glenn. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Hoof. What is it? Hoof hearted. Cool. I'm for it. I'll give it a seven five. I didn't rate the first one. Oh shoot. Um. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll go. I'll go double sevens. Okay. Yeah. You, you, and if, if the last was a seven, we, we're gonna we're gonna hit the slot machine. Okay. You went full um, seven seven. You went full uh, Hank Hill on me. Yep. Oh, we have, we've done this before, haven't we? King yeah, of the Hill. I don't watch this show. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's jump back into some free agency stuff. And then <laughs> actually, I put on Instagram moments before uh, we we started recording, um, and we'll we'll end this with some fan questions because cool. uh, we got a whole lot of. But, Do we have a lot? Yeah. Uh, I, I think we okay. would be remiss if we talked about the free agency this year and didn't talk about the ridiculous quarterback situations that are happening right now. Yeah. Right? I feel like everybody is just switching quarterbacks and everyone's going oh, everywhere. It's so hard to tell everyone is. Yeah. It's, I mean, Jimmy G to the Raiders. We'll, 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 we'll rapid fire a couple. And, okay. then, um, and then there's two I want to talk about. Jimmy G to the Raiders. How do you like that? Uh, it's, I think it's good for the Raiders. I don't, I don't and, and when I say all this, I don't mean to disrespect anybody. I don't think that's an upgrade from what they had. Okay, Derek Carr to the Saints. How do you feel about that? Um, again, I thought he should have stayed in Vegas, but I understand that it probably was like time for him to move on. Um, I think that that team, um, with no disrespect to Andy Dalton, is improved. Cool. And lastly, before we dive into some uh, deeper conversations, Baker Mayfield to the Bucks. Um. Yeah. Interesting. Um. Baker obviously had a little a little life last year in L.A. Being there now is the question is is Baker humbled and wanting to you know like work kind of have a new found feel for and love for the game. Uh, I think that'll be big. I think they also have a young quarterback there. I want to say Kyle Trask. I think they drafted a couple years ago, who I've heard is you know they they really liked, but. You know, with Byron being gone now, what's what's going on with the offense? All this stuff, which by the way was absolutely ridiculous that they want to paint him as the scapegoat. Um, but uh, anyway, um, it'll be interesting. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, more important follow up question: than that. Is he still headbutting people with helmets on with no helmet on? Uh, who knows? I, I, maybe that's stopped too now. <laughs> Listen, man. It's being from Tampa, <laughs> you, it's a wild place. Florida's like a lawless swamp. That's an office reference. All right, so two I want to talk about. Let's start in the AFC North. Yeah. Lamar Jackson, man. Ooh. Lamar ja- what's what's happening? I, I don't know. To be, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I know there's all kinds of talks of collusion. There's talks of um, deals that he's turned down. He says he hasn't. I, I don't even know. I haven't even kept up with it. Yeah. Um, I would say I think it hurts him not having an agent. I know it hurts him not having an agent. I'm not sure why he doesn't have one. He just doesn't want one. Um, you know, in, in the NFL, you can pay agents between 1% and 3%. So he could pay an agent 1% of his 200 and some million dollar contract would be fine. But is that is that the bat percentage to the contract rate or is that the take-home rate? That's like, so if he gets $100 million, let's say. Yeah. That's 1% of $100 million. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, and so I, I just think that it, you know, I don't. I, I wish I knew more about what was going. Oh, speaking of Duck Hodges, <laughs> speaking of quarterbacks, come on, Duck. What are we doing? What are we talking about, Duck? I'm trying to get Duck to come on the show. By the way, when his uh, uh, there's going to be a concert, and he's coming up to it. And um, when is that? When is that? When are they coming down? That's the Soon, end of right? April. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Luke Combs. I'm so excited to see Luke Combs. Dude. If we get Luke Combs on the show, Luke Combs, if you want to come on the show, man, we listen to your music every day. That dude's voice. I love Luke Combs. I think a lot of times when you listen to artists, like records, it's great, obviously, because you can polish it. And then you go see him live, and it's like, oh, it's a little off. Luke Combs' voice in real life is unreal. Really? I can't. I'm so excited. Bro, so anyway, you, they're, they're coming in. Duck's going to come into that concert, Luke Combs, and we're going to hang out. Luke Combs, side note. Do you know that dude used to play rugby? Really? He, dude, he was, this dude's like the most interesting man in the world. He used to play rugby and was in an acapella group. At the same time. Luke, come on, man. Come on the show and tell us about it, please. The fans would love to see Luke on the show. I would love to see Luke on I the show. Would, yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Me too. But, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Lamar Jackson. <laughs> sorry. Doc, come on, man. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Um, Lamar Jackson is 
a game changer. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I, you know, he, here's another interesting point. That's something to think about. He and and um, and I'll probably screw this up a little bit, but he and um, Josh Allen um, are the same class. I'm pretty mm, sure. Interesting. Okay, I think Josh signed a new deal like two years ago and has already made forty some million dollars, hmm. while Lamar's still in the same. That's forty some million that Lamar will never make back. Yeah, and I understand he's waiting for this big deal, but he also could he could have signed like just keep doing two year deals for two for two for fifty, two for hundred, two for hundred, two yeah. for hundred. You know. And instead, he's still on these deals where he's making, you know, franchise tag money at twenty something or whatever. But right, I, I don't know. I just it just feels like he's missing out on, he's been missing out on bigger money that he could have been getting. But yeah. maybe it's not about that. Maybe it's about wanting to go somewhere else. Maybe it's about hmm. a co. I, who knows what it is? But, um, you know, I know that the Steelers probably want him to get on a battle there. Yeah. Do you think? Because you mentioned not having an agent, and Lamar is the only or one of two. Yeah, there's not many that don't have agents. Okay. Do you think, well, let me ask this question first. How significant is the role of sports agents in aiding the NFL? Aiding the, the player or the NFL? I mean, the actual, or the NFL as an organization. So obviously the, the agents are there. They're the liaison between the league and the player. Mm -hmm. And it, there's got to be some benefit for the NFL having agents to work with. Because is there ever a time when it's like, hey, listen, all right. We can't meet this number on this guy. But if we package it up, we can make something where everyone's happy a little bit, and that helps the league more. And it's, so my, yeah. what I'm getting at is if, if it's benefiting the NFL at some regard to have agency, and then you get somebody who's an outstanding player, get something that's guaranteed money, crazy, kind of like a Deshaun Watson contract, mm -hmm. without an agent, does that make a bad look to the point where they wouldn't want to do this? Well. I know it's a loaded question. Yeah, I know it's like. I mean. At the end of the day, it's it, it comes down to the team, yeah, right. Like the ownership, the GM, the coaches, they have to want the player and want to give them the deal. And in this situation, I don't know what's going. on. Maybe they have offered things, and Lamar just wants a little more, wants something different. I don't know what it is. Sure. Um, because both there's a lot of he said, she said, yeah. you know, two sided type stuff. Not but, in the NFL. Yeah, right. Um, and then for the NFL, it, it just keeps him in the news cycle. Whether he signs or doesn't, he's in the cycle, so it's good for the NFL. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think so, I mean something's got to happen soon. I, I can't imagine he's going to play this year on this another deal like this and risk injuries mm -hmm. and and you know people start, start asking the questions last year like why didn't he come back? Did he not come back to self <laughs> self preserve his body and mm -hmm. stuff? I, I don't know, but um, you know he he's he's a different he's a different animal out there now. He's a good football player. Yeah. Yeah, it's while I'm, I'm interested and excited to see how this is going to play out because I feel like it would be extremely awkward to have this so public, uh, this back and forth, and then have to go back to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And Well, the good news is his teammates just want him back because he helps them win. Well, yeah, he's good. You so, know, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and he hasn't done or said anything. You know, it's not like he's telling – the, so the fans can't really be mad at him. Yeah. If anything, they're probably more mad at the, the city for or the, the the team for not signing them. So there is I don't know when it airs, but he mentioned he was going to do an exclusive interview with himself. On, oh, I did hear about that. Has it YouTube come out yet? I have no idea. I don't think so. That would be amazing. Yeah. So he's he's I don't know if he's interviewing himself. But I'm. Ex what if he did like this, where he sat here and then went over there and answered the questions, and then came back over here? What if he did this exact show and he was sipping beers, and we're like, "Come on, man, we're retired. Stop competing with him." <laughs> like, what are we, like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Uh, but speaking of wild quarterback conversations, you ha we got to talk about Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I turn the lights off. It needs to be a dark. One. <laughs> That was that was very neat. I've never heard of that. Like what? Hey, what, uh, listen. I'm not judging. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever you need. Dude, that I've timing was so good. I've never heard of anything like that. But I mean, you, hey, you, do you think he did the hallucin? Didn't he do the hallucinogenic stuff at the same like, ayahuasca? Yeah, I did. Is he, that hallucinogenic or whatever yeah, or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think you do that during the? I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, darkness retreat. I would not want to do a, a like a hallucinogenic and then go into pitch black darkness. Because you're because that's just like well, paranoia it, sets in. Well, listen, from what I understand, yeah, you got two roads you're going to travel there on a hallucinogenic. That could either be what's up or that can be the worst ride of your life. Okay, and okay. I think pitch blackness. Oh, go pens. 
Oh, nice. Sorry. I just like, then, yeah, I just think start. absolute darkness is not going to be motivating start you. seeing things and hearing things. Yeah. Listen, brother, man, the mind, hey, mine's a, mine can be strong. a dark place. Yeah. You know what I mean? So no pun intended with the well, pitch black. Interesting. Because I know, I thought he was going to go away for like, like three, four, for like for like longer than he did. I think yeah. he probably realized like, all right, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> I need vitamin D, man. What's up? I this need is- something. <laughs> I'm bored. I'm really missing early. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what happened. But anyway, yeah, that that's a unique animal in itself because I, I, who knows what's going on. They, they were reporting. See, I also think that Aaron doesn't like when people report things before he does. So when mm-hmm. Trey Wingo, I think, was the first one to report, someone reported at first. That, I don't know if it was Trey. Maybe I, I forget who it was. But someone reported that he's going – that the Jets deal is done. Oh, and like I feel finals? like he's like – like he doesn't like that. So then he's like – yeah. You well, know, I know I, he said he wanted to go there too. Like yeah, he, yeah. he's come flat out and said it. And that's that's going to be an interesting thing because the Packers still hold the cards. So, and I know people say, well, he kind of does because he could retire. But is that really holding the cards? Like, no. It, it, he just basically told Green Bay that he doesn't want to play there. So then you have, if you do go back to those fans, are they going to be? I'm sure they're going to be accepting because he's what he's done for that sure. organization. But there's going to be some that are like. Do you didn't want to be here? Yeah. If you're in that situation, are you more terrified to go back to the organization or the fan base? The fans. I would yeah. care more about the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what you're playing for. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Ultimately. Yeah. Because the organization is going to, they want you back, yeah. whether, you know, whatever. But yeah, the fans are the ones you so don't want to let down. You'll have to educate me because I've never been, I don't know if you know this, I've never been a quarterback in the National Football no? League. No, 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 no. Okay. I got the same amount of, when playoff wins, wins as some, some of the guys, guys. Uh, but yeah, no, I, no one ever called me up. Uh, but is it standard for a quarterback of one team to be able to tell another team what players Ooh, they should be signing? I've never. I, I don't even know how that's not collusion or something. I've never heard of that before. And and well, then maybe not even go there. I should say. Reportedly, Reported, or yeah. allegedly. allegedly, allegedly. I don't know what's uh, this. These are the Get reports. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Allegedly, yeah. I don't. I've never heard that before. That's unbelievable. Um, I, at what level? Awesome. At, at what awesome. level? Like if you're the if you're the franchise guy. Right, and you know, there's been. Oh, it I, doesn't matter if you're the franchise guy. You still don't get say like that all the time. Really? No. That's wild. Yeah. Pretty impressive. That is wild that he can do. I, I saw some. It was a, some internet meme. It was like, man, Aaron Rodgers is the. Um, the quarterback of the, the Packers, the owner of the Browns, and the GM of the Jets. Owner of the Bears. Oh, the, the yeah. Bears. Yeah, the Bears. And the GM of the Jets. Yes. What Jet, a, what a fantastic impressive. career. <laughs> yeah, listen. Again, this is all somewhat speculation because we don't know the nuances of what's happening there, man. Like, there could be more happening behind the scenes that probably is right. in the Packer organization that nobody knows. Um, but uh, it's... It blows my mind. What do you think's going to happen in the? I mean, clearly he's come out and said he wants to play for the Jets. The Jets are clearly pursuing this. What is the leverage here, or, or how, like what number are you trying to get if you're the Packers? Like, well, I think you got. I think you've got to try and get a couple first rounders. Yeah, that's what that's is what reported. I think. Yeah, I, I, you have to. One first rounder's not enough. I don't think. Yeah, that's wild, man. Yeah. Did you It'll expect? Did you expect the Jets? No, because it's, I thought it would be anybody but the Jets or the Minnesota same. because it's so much like Favre. Yeah, I thought the and same. he's been trying to like, like distance himself from Favre. Do you, what do you think was because he when he said is it, he going to go where twelve in New York too? I mean, that's, that's Joe that, Namath. Yeah, I, like, I, I don't know how that works. I have no idea, but I, I feel like that's uh, it, when he came out. and He said it on, on McAfee's show. He seemed. He seemed to say it like, oh, of course. He's like, I knew I was going to play when I came out of the darkness. And uh, and I knew I was going to play for the Jets. Well, That seems... Hey, man. Listen, uh, all know. the best to you, Aaron. Yeah. I, I know, know, I know you're, you're, you're watching this show. Yeah, I'm sure he's watching this. <laughs> he, he cares about us. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but hey, man, I hope it works out for you. For real, dude. I don't know you, but listen... I, I can't imagine the negotiation process with that and all that, but it is entertaining to watch in the midst of all this stuff. It's nuts. It, yeah, I, I don't understand. But ultimately, you think that that plays that plays through? He's in, he's in the Jets next year. We don't know. I have no. I yeah. truly don't know. Yeah, I truly don't know. Neither do the rest of us. Neither do the rest of us. We get some fan questions now. Let's yeah. get to some like real <laughs> stuff now. <laughs> The pen, the, the the pens tied it up, and now Senators have a power play with 
two minutes to go. Like, what is going on? Come on, pens. Get it out. All right. Come let's on. Go. Get it out. Give us a play by play of this pens game. Get right it right. out. I'm trying to kill the penalty. We can't kill the penalty. One of our guy, one of our guys that didn't have a stick right now. Oh, they just scored. So, uh, Revan Camp here on Instagram uh, said they heard a story about you starting behind the coach's son in high school and wanted to hear if you have any um, advice for high school football players. Mm. You know, I would say it kind of what I talked about when, when it came to that college stuff is like, don't give up on it. You know, like don't, don't just because there's um, adversity and it doesn't have to be sports, but when there's adversity, don't just give up on it. Find a way to fight through it. Find a way to overcome, find a way to, um, use it to make yourself better, you know, yeah. um, because it can. And, and, you know, I had to, when I wasn't going to be the quarterback, I, I basically went to coach and said, Hey, listen, I want to, I want to play. Yeah. Like I could have pouted and sat behind the, and in the back of the quarterback. I said, I want to play. Can I play wide receiver? Can I play another position? So find something else that maybe you can do that will, you know, benefit your, your team as well. Yeah. Benefit you. Because in high school, you still have the freedom to kind of switch around and play. I mean, because yeah. you're playing, you're playing right. both ways anyway, right? At, uh, in some high schools? Yeah, some high schools you do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, yeah, I just find a way to, to just help the team out. Yeah. So this is from Marco in Brazil. Um, and he's talking about your cadence, Blue 80. <laughs> Where did Blue 80 come from? It is, there's, there's very little to do with anything other than just a – sometimes you just – sometimes the colors matter, numbers – rarely ever uh, yeah numbers rarely ever do colors sometimes matter but a lot of times they don't matter yeah some practice would be using like goofy colors sometimes yeah but um yeah blue a just kind of it's almost like habit like it was it's just something you did and so you never you didn't think about it. like i didn't think i didn't know when i did it really uh -uh. <laughs> it, it had nothing to do with anything so you got defense watching film studying that and you're like i have no idea what i'm saying it means nothing i blacked out out there it truly meant nothing that's good for you yeah that's awesome i remember one time i said black 20 we were playing the Ravens, and Ed Reed was like, "Why you call my like? Call, why you call my number?" Like, started yelling at me. So, yeah, there, there's 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 just uniqueness. There's nothing to it. That's awesome, dude. And Melissa L from Instagram wants to know what's your favorite thing to eat with a beer. Oh, that's I, that feels like a anything. On the day. If you watch the show, anything, yeah, anything, because yeah. as people love to comment on Ben's house and food. Well, well, yeah, house and food. I'm hungry. What else are we doing? <laughs> um, what else are we doing? That's a um, great. That's a great response. Yeah. Uh, Golly, anything. Um, <laughs> I mean, how do you go wrong with wings? Yeah, wings is so solid, dude. Uh, yeah. Wings, cheese cheese tots, french fries. Big fried foods yeah, guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, man. Oh, uh, I think this is, a, this is a question here about um, the 97-yard touchdown pass that you had to Juju in 2017. Um, was the Detroit, Lions? Detroit, yeah. And then one in 18 with the Broncos. Uh, okay. What do you think about both of those? And then I'd love to talk about Juju going to the Pats. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I remember the one in Detroit. We were struggling on offense. Um, and I'm not good at remembering plays, but we're, we, we were struggling on offense. We couldn't do much. And we were backed up, and they gave us um, like a cover two type look, two high safeties. And I knew we had some verticals, and Juju was going down the middle. I'm like, man, I have a chance here for Juju, but I don't. there's no way they stay in this. And um, they stayed in it, and I just I threw the ball early enough and got him. And I, Juju was one of those guys that you you know when he caught it there, I never expect him to go all the way. And the Denver game, like you don't expect him to go all the yeah. way, but somehow he's got just enough speed, <laughs> and he, and then he's got just enough strength too that if a guy kind of gets to him, he can like fend him off. So um, no, it was fun. It was fun to have those moments um, with him and with guys like that. So those are neat things. Um, and with him going to the Patriots, I think that's I think that's awesome for him. I think. Um, It'll be interesting to see because Juju is a very fun-loving guy, as we all know, and he's got to play for two head coaches in Andy Reid and Mike Tomlin that are very relaxed and laid back and fun and allow a lot of um, things, a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know that the the coach uh, that he's playing for now maybe allows as much fun. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if, how, and what Juju has to do to dial it back a little bit. Yeah, I, I, when I first saw that announced, that's the first thing I thought about. Yeah. I was like, okay, so Juju, Belichick. But then 
I was reminded of something you told me. He's like, listen, man, Juju be out there doing a TikTok, messing around. Like, he having fun. His kid, like, he's a fun-loving dude. But when he steps foot on the football field, no one takes it more seriously. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's going he's gonna to give it everything he has. And the Pens just lost. This is so annoying. What? Pens oh, lost man. like three or four yeah. in a row. Come on, guys. What are we doing? I miss the playoffs. I'm going to keep messing around. Um... Uh, yeah, he, he will. He'll give his heart, soul. I mean, everything he has for the team. And so I think the guys like that. Coach will like that. Um, and he's growing up a little bit now. Maybe he won't. Yeah, be too crazy. Well, Andy Sanchez has a um, question about the draft. What are your predictions for the first two picks? You think they go offense or defense? I think we know defense. Defense. Yep. And uh, is that just because of habit? Or are you looking at the actual team? And saying, like, no, they'll probably want to do I that. I think it's just out of habit. I think they should go O-line. Um, but uh, I, I think they'll go defense. I really do. Yeah. Uh, I got a couple more here if you're open to yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, man. So, uh, Danielle McKinstry. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing, mispronouncing that, Danielle. Um, how did you feel when you got drafted by the Steelers? Were you happy that you were going to Pittsburgh? Uh, I, I truly didn't care where I went. I, and I can say that um, very honestly. I was just excited to get a chance to go to the NFL and play. Um, and so when I got drafted here, I was I was just beyond excited just to get a chance to play. Um, and, and truthfully, I didn't know much about the history. I mean, I knew the Steelers were a, a good franchise. I knew they had Jerome and stuff like that. But I didn't know a lot about the history uh, coming here. And so then once I, once I came here, I started learning about it and understanding, wow, this is there's a lot of rich tradition here. And so I was really excited to be able to be a part of that. Yeah, so this is an interesting question because okay. I don't know that we ever talked about this uh, on this show. Randy J. Mogul Randy. wants to know how much pain were you in regarding your foot in the Super Bowl versus Green Bay? Ooh. So here's a story, Spencer. You don't, you don't even know the story, do I you? I think you've told me this story. Did I tell you the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, my financial advisor rented a house um, down in Dallas. And so our whole fam- our, like our family was there, agents, like everybody was in this house just hanging out the – you know, when we had free time, we would just hang out. They had this amazing, like, beautiful house. Um, had a shuffleboard table, ping pong table, pool table, all this stuff. So we were just hanging out. And there was a hard, like, a hardwood floor. And we were playing. And we were, you know, we took our shoes off out of respect to the house. And we were playing shuffleboard. And we'd throw the shuffleboard down. And we would, like, r- we would run down and, like, slide, like, you know, slide across the wood floor to, to, to watch the thing come down, you know, being silly. And, um, as I slid across the floor, uh, a piece of wood shank about this long broke off into the middle of my bottom of my foot. <laughs> and it was in there so deep that I had to go see like the trainers, the doctors, like they had to like get it out and little shards. Like it didn't just come out. It was like one piece and it came out. Like there were little pieces in there. Like shards? Of, of wood. And it was awful. And it was one of the most painful things I've ever had to deal with. We soaked my foot. We did everything. Um, I wore a bigger size shoe. Um, I remember... Like it, we, 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 and Doc couldn't shoot it up because you, you know, your foot goes numb, you're done. Yeah. Um, and so that was one of the most painful things. I remember going through warm ups and just, and almost looking at Mike like, I, I don't, I don't know that I can play. Did you still have shards of it still in there? Yeah. Yeah. I had shards of it for like almost a year later. You were pulling out. Uh-huh. Do people know that? I don't know. They do now. <laughs> I didn't talk about it. people. People think I was like this diva and talk about all my injuries. Like, no, nah, y'all don't know about the things that, that I went through. But anyway, um, <laughs> Uh, it was it was so bad. Like I was in so much pain before the game. Like I I was like I don't think I can like I can't move. And I'm, am I going to hurt the team by playing? Yeah. And um, it was it was one of the most awful things I've, I've ever experienced. Yeah. So yeah, that is absolutely, hardwood floor shuffleboard. That is absolutely wild. Yep. Uh, and if you don't believe me, people out there that don't believe me, just check <laughs> the medical records. <laughs> right. Yeah. That that is something you talk about your injuries. Like I I always knew you were a tough dude, but I know you on a different level. And then when I interviewed Doc Bradley, yeah. so we did a four-part docu-series, and, and I interviewed Doc Bradley, and he's like, oh, dude, I can't even show you all of Ben's records. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't, like, they have their own filing cabinet. Yep. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well here, is a, uh, here is a more lighthearted question. Dude, that is so wild. I feel like some Pits- like Pittsburgh's going to implode a little bit. <laughs> um, so this is from Fry on Instagram. Um, Fry. Always known that you uh, love and love, sorry, they always know, known and love Ben's Canine Foundation. And on that note, what kind of dog would you be uh, and, or what would you want to be? Oh, what kind of dog? What kind of dog would you want to be? Oh, 
I don't know. It's a good question. I've got two German Shepherds, and I love them. Yeah, I figured you'd be a German Shepherd. Yeah, so like that. They're tough. Or like a good dog's very loyal. Rottweiler. I feel like you'd be a cool Rottweiler. Rottweiler too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 being around my shepherds now, like see, seeing like how, not saying I'm smart, but just like how loyal. Because I feel like I'm. We talked about the other day. We were, we were. It was snowing outside, and all the whole family was in the hot tub. Right? Because there's nothing better than being in the hot tub when it's snowing. It's outside. the best. And we were talking to our kids about like what would, if, if you could say like something about yourself, what would you say is like one of your like would people say is one of your best qualities? Mm. You know, and so the kids were like. I just said that I'm really good at golf. Like, no, dude. Like, can we give something different? Like, <laughs> like, come on. Like, let's think about this. You know. So, like, my I, I told, um, like, mine is, I'm incredibly loyal to the people I love and my friends. Like, I'll say to a fault because I think that's the wrong word to say. But, sure. but I am. If I love you and you're my and you are family or my my friend, which is family to me, I am like incredibly loyal and do anything for you. And so I think like that's what I that's what I said. So that's why I think like I see my German Shepherds being that way. They're just incredibly loyal. Yes. Um tough, athletic enough. So I'd I'd say German Shepherd, I guess. Yeah. It's a solid answer. And it's a solid reason behind that answer, man. Yeah, Cuz I would I would uh I would concur oh, with that uh character description of yourself. So let's do one more and then we'll do the final beer and we can land this uh this plane. Okay. Uh Michael D I don't, know I, was, I don't know why I said it like that. I, okay. just, I felt like, uh, of, you know, is there, well, the first part of the question, is there anyone that you're excited about that our Steelers have picked up in, in free agency thus far? We covered that. Yeah. 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 And when's the next live podcast? Mm. I don't know. We haven't talked about that we, yet. We have not even mentioned it. No. We need to find a sponsor first or something. Yeah. There's so many more questions that I want to get to. At some point, guys, I will say this. We will get to the rest of these that I can't even. There's, I mean, we'll be here for four hours. We should just do like a whole show on just that, though. Yeah. We totally should. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be the next guest. There you go. Our next yeah, guest man. will be, be you yeah. and your questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, but as far as the uh, live show, we don't know. We don't no, know we don't. We'll figure out something fun. Yeah, we will. We're gonna do. We, you know, what we're gonna do. I, I'm gonna. We're gonna. I'm not gonna make a promise because I don't like doing that. But we're gonna make this. I'm gonna make this declaration Ooh. that we are gonna take this show to training camp this year. Wow! And so it'll be maybe not live, but maybe it'll be live there. We could try to figure. They better have. Good, they got good Wi-Fi. That's the problem. Like so, when we did the the first live show, we. We called it a live show, and obviously this airs on YouTube, so people are like, yo, dude, I try to go on YouTube and try uh, to stream. I'm like, yeah, it was live, like, in person. Live in person, yeah. We yeah, the stuff. Wi-Fi has to be very good for them. Oh, really? To not, yeah, because you're going to have, like, a terrible experience trying to watch it. Uh, it's lagging, rats. it's buffering. Everyone's phone's connected to you know what I'm saying? So okay, well, it's a whole thing. But Maybe be in person, our next in-person one. Yeah. No, that's, we'll do one, maybe, I don't know. But I've never yeah. gotten to go up there. To Le Trib. Le Trib. I'd love to go up there. It'll be fun. Yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Just spill? Nah, dog. No, okay. no. Pay attention to that over there, though. Like Just I hear like, my kids, like, upstairs or something, but. So this is the last one. This one's got okay. a little. Oh, that's got a It's a little wobbly, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, buddy. Uh-oh. Just checking on the kids. Oh, there we go. You can have that one if you want. Oh, this one's yours, dude. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's um, delicious, though, by the way. check on my kids, make sure everyone's sleeping. There's one. Dude, I did it again. Oh, oh boy. It's just a dribblet, though. Oh, boy. Nothing wild. Dude, that's not even my fault, man. This is bulging from Two. the, like, this is, like, uh, dings and stuff on it. Three. Well, you ever seen those, like... Oh, like, like I got dropped a few times? Yeah, you ever see those, like, videos of people in the Amazon warehouse just throwing packages and kicking it? <laughs> not Amazon. We love Amazon. I want to make sure my packages get on the <laughs> delivery time. Amazon one time. I'd say Amazon hit my... Hit hit my like stones out front. And I was damaged, here for that. Oh, were you here for that? Yeah, dude. Damaged my fountain out front and everything, and didn't even do anything. I said, "Can I get an email? Like y'all can like reimburse me. I mean, shouldn't y'all reimburse me? I mean, I feel like that's a dude. You have you're we're struggling. This is here. not my we're fault, struggling. dude. Let me get your paper towel. Look, at, this ain't even brother. This ain't even sitting right. Look at this. Like, you see what I'm saying? That shouldn't do that. It's all it's all shook up. Uh-huh. I think the funnier part oh, so good. The funnier part of that Is when the dude called You remember when you well, told yeah, me that I was, I, was, I was like can I You know You guys I assume you guys have insurance And you can reimburse me Or something Like yeah. you guys ruined Like Fountain. stone And yeah. stuff out there Like it's a big deal Yeah yeah well, We definitely That's all part We'll take care of it for you We'll call, call. 
Never got a call, never got an email, nothing. Well, the funny part... Like, hey, Bezos. <laughs> hey, Jeff. We're a little, a little shy on shekels over there yeah. or something. Gee, many Christmas. Well, because then he called up. He's like, um, I'm at Big Man's house. Yeah, and like, come on. And I hit the fountain. And I hit the fountain. I'm not supposed to be up at the fountain. And I hit it. I'm sorry. It's my second day on the job. Yeah. Hey, man. That, anyway. would, that would be a terrible first day on the job, though, dude. It's like, yeah, yeah. Especially if you just moved to Pittsburgh. You're like, I just moved to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm going to start my life over. I'm working for Amazon. I'm good, do, doing good. And I, and I ran over the quarterback's foot. Front. I mean, <laughs> yeah, foot. What do we have here? All right. This right here is from Stubborn. Strawberry. Yeah, it does a little bit. Stubborn Germany. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm tripping over these words. Stubborn German Brewing oh. Company. Uh, Barrel Age Series. It's called Idaho Gem. It is fr- it is from uh, Waterloo, Illinois. So not from Germany. No, but it's a whole <laughs> yeah, it's from Illinois, <laughs> the Germany of America. Okay, Illinois. It's there's a whole like four pack of different German. It's the oh, nice. yeah stubborn German. I got the there was like an Oktoberfest one. There was like a Dunkel. Okay. No, I know you're not a big fan of Dunkles, but it's an IPA. We hop this IPA with only Idaho gem hops grown at Gooding Hop Farms in Wilder, Idaho. We hope you enjoy this bright, sweet, cherry, and juicy grapefruit flavors yeah. that, and this unique uh, hops provide. I thought it was interesting because uh, having been a fan of German beer and, and sampled it at the source, I don't know that I've ever had a German beer that's hoppy, like super, super hoppy, like a German IPA. I've never had that. Huh. What do you think? What are your thoughts there? I don't know. Yeah, ooh, ooh, it's got, oh, what's on the back end? Yeah. It tastes better when it's not spilling. Yeah, that's fine. That doesn't really taste like IPA-ish, though, to me. It's not, like, super hoppy to me. No. But I feel like more German beers are, like, malt forward. Like, even their lagers are, like, toasted malts and stuff. Right? Yeah, it's just, it's just not bad. I'll give, it a, I'll give it a six. But mm-hmm. I'll read this note. Ben. Five and a half, six. From a lifelong Steeler fan, I grew up in Western PA and currently live in the St. Louis area. This local brewery has um, some of my favorite beer, and the owners are always doing something amazing for the local community. Oh, uh, cool. I think you'll enjoy the Blitzkrieg, which is one of the other ones. Thank you for 18 awesome seasons, Tyler. Tyler, thank you, Tyler. I appreciate you and the beers, the support. Um, thanks for being a fan. And thank you for the beers again. Um, it's sm- I thought it was going to taste a lot different. The smell so was a lot I. different. So did I. I don't hate it, though. No, it is not bad. Um, I can't quite go seven, though. Yeah. I can't. I can't give three sevens. I'm gonna go six and a half. That's fair. Um, I think what's even cooler though. It's 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 good though. This little homie just standing yeah, at just you. hanging out back there. He you know he, he looks like a little stubborn German. What up, guy? A little. Hey, by the way, stubborn German. There he was. Um, I'm make this announcement right now. Yeah. St. Patty's Day. Yeah. I did. What did you do? enjoy two Guinnesses? Did you? And I know. Wait, you're drinking the Guinness? Yes, it is. I can drink Guinness. It's delightful. Yeah. You like well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> Bell, and guess what else? My dad said. Was that? My dad was like, you know, I tried to go down. My, my parents are moving right now. You know. Yeah. He goes, I wanted to have my green beer, like I do. Every, he says how he said it. I'm trying to have my green beer, like I do every day. I mean, every year. <laughs> I was like, wait, every day drink green beer. Dad? He goes, you know, you know, same place. I like to have one green beer. Yeah. Like my dad doesn't drink. Does, a he, beer. does he do that? Really? Yeah, he wants to drink a green beer. Oh, that's Put awesome. A little dye in his beer. All your, right. Your dad gets cooler every green time. Green dye. Well, the, the movers packed up his dye, so he didn't have any oh. green dye, so he couldn't do it. <laughs> he was bummed. <laughs> he did was you, bummed. Did you try a, a proper uh, black and tan? No, I don't still know how to make okay, it. Okay, so I had like a legit, a resident Irish friend, Justin Bryan. Yes. Told me how to do it after I embarrassed myself. Resident Irish or just resident drinker? <laughs> well, same Beer thing. Drinker. Right? Oh, same thing. Okay, same okay. thing. So, he, so apparently he poured the, the lager. In, yeah, and then with the stout, you're supposed to pour it over a spoon, like you flip the spoon upside down, and there's like a special spoon to pour it over. Well, of course, it's got to be a special spoon. Yeah, of course. Justin probably carries it in his pocket too. Yeah, he has a whole thing. <laughs> Justin carries it in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, he's got the whole thing, bro. So um, next time we try to do that, yeah, well, hey Justin, will you come over and show us how to do a proper? Yeah, what's it called? Black, black and, and silver, tan. Black, black and tan. tan, or half and half. Sometimes people call. Please, it. yeah, black and a proper one. <laughs> 
Jeez. <laughs> Justin. Jeez. All right, man. Well, let's land this plane. We appreciate you guys uh, for all your support. Uh, we're over 50,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is really cool for, <sighs> yeah, for two dudes in a basement drinking beer. It's awesome. Uh, helps when one of them's a future Hall of Famer. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we appreciate the time that you guys have spent with us. Thank you so much for sending in beers. If you guys want to continue doing that or you have a beer that you like that you want to have Ben try, the address to send that in is going to be in the description below. So make sure you guys check that out. If you are not already, go ahead and follow at football. Excuse me. Boy, we're struggling tonight. Words are hard, guys. <laughs> at footballing with Ben on Instagram. We do all kinds of uh, exclusive content. We're going to be dropping the recipes from Chef Evan. Yes. So it's going to be dropping here soon. Uh, and we do giveaways and stuff like that as well. Stay plugged in, tapped in. Other than that, we appreciate you and we will see you next time. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate you. Bang and bang. The end. This, this Happy birthday, Bay. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>